Hey guys, it's Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitters, and uh, this is your basic Sorgonomics. And, and like I said, last week I wanted to start ha- uh, bringing you a little bit of a how-to episode every week, so we're going to play with this a little bit more this week. Uh, last week you can check out our how-to on, on how to use uh, Tweet Jukebox to help automate some regular stuff you want to put out there, but don't forget to be interactive while you're at it. You still have to converse. As, as I've been reminded recently. Um, but no, it's about social media. Don't forget to be social in the meantime. But uh, it's definitely a good tool. Today we're going to talk about podcasting. And now we do video podcasts like we do this show, for instance. We do the Awesome Cast Wrestling Mayhem show, Boss Battle, and a few other ones as well. So I, I think it's important. Uh, well, I want to show kind of what I've kind of developed over the years as my process. And I use Final Cut Pro X. Now, Final Cut Pro X is a uh, $300 program, so you will have to drop a lot of coin for that. But uh, keep in mind that this is professional software, professional-grade software that uh, used to be $1,000 to be able to get your your hands on the entire studio, and a lot of stuff is really built into there. So I'm going to scratch the surface and kind of uh, talk about a little bit of why do I use it uh, and, and how is it saving me time when I'm putting these shows together? Uh, so here's a little bit of the interface. If you've never seen it before, uh, this is it. you got your timeline at the bottom. I know some of you might be on audio. So I'll be very descriptive uh, as much as I can here. Uh, so generally, this is what you're going to see. Uh, you know, We have your uh, video outlet. We have your assets over here on the left. These are all clips. Your projects and clips are over here. I got an extra project, so we'll go and close that. And this is actually my project for Awesome Cast for this week, episode 275. Ignore that number. I just keep forgetting to upgrade, update the numbers on here. And there's a bunch of assets, the most recent ones. And and I don't do a lot of housekeeping, so there's a lot of old broken ones in here as well. Uh, old broken clips and, and videos and everything like that. So the nice thing about this is, uh, like, like I said, it, the, way, the way that it's made here uh, in the timeline, you're able to really kind of drag and drop things right in the timeline, and things kind of wrap around it. Uh, so I've set it up so uh, right at the beginning of the clip, you'll see a, a bunch of uh, different clips here, right? And you'll see, uh, you know, first my intro, so that's a new thing from this week. Uh, you'll see our, our ad that we have for our friends at Slice on Broadway here in town, and then you'll see the intros and separate, separate audio tracks, and uh, you'll see little anchors. So this audio down here is anchored to this point on my clip. So no matter what I do with the footage after it, and we have uh, video clips where you know I'm using Wirecast, everything you see uh, in show, as far as the graphics, as far as the switching, is already part of the video. We've done that in Wirecast already. Uh, we do a live switching. So, so the editing of, of the bulk of the show is complete. So what, what happens now is I can take that and... Uh, Grab the clip from this week. So I have this one. It's Awesome Cast Raw 1. So that's the first part of it. And I already know that this is the first part of the show because we, we separate it so we can put a break in the middle. And I'm going to drag it down here. And it's going to replace this. And no matter how long that clip is, it'll just replace it from scratch. Now I can go in here. And I'll just go look for, and you can see a little bit with the waves, um, how it kind of bottoms out. And I know that where this peaks right here is usually where I'm doing my intro, and I'll double check. Hey guys, it's the Awesome Cast coming back to you live from Pittsburgh. That's my intro for the Awesome Cast. Hopefully, you could hear that on my other mic here. So I'll go ahead and hit B, or if you go up here, there's a blade tool. Clip that out. We'll get rid of all this extra fluff where I'm talking to my guests and everything in advance, and uh, cut that out. And we'll look at this. There's a transition here already, and I see I, I still have a little bit of room, so I want to kind of trim that down a little bit. And then when you're done, it should go right from my intro into... Hey guys, it's the awesome cast. I'm going to go live from Pittsburgh. There you go. goes right into it. Now, another thing I do, and I'll, and I'll have to go to the beginning and the end of each clip and make sure it's the right intro, outro, because I don't hit record and go right into it. There's always a little bit of overlap. When you're recording anything, you, you know, unless it's completely live and it's, it's good to go and everything, um, you want to hit record, give it a few seconds to, I call it spin up from days when you know, we had to wait for the tape to come to speed, or else you just start talk, talking and we didn't catch the first like second of it because the tape wasn't going 
and actually recording to the tape yet, even though you hit record a, a couple seconds ago, for instance, right? It gives you a little bit of extra bit to, to trim off there. Or if whatever reason you need to add a little bit uh, for a transition or something, because uh, it, it's going to still need some of that clip in order to throw the fade in there or something like that. I might be throwing a lot of kind of video terms at you. Again, this is just a quick kind of way uh, I'm hoping to give you an idea of what I'm doing with this. Uh, so back to this. So we're, we did it to the beginning, and of course, I'm going to go in here. We have this ad in here that I do from you know what happened last week around around the network. So I'll go in and uh, and look for the outro there, and you know I can do this real quick. But of course, we see me going doing the toss. We'll be, right we'll be right back, and I know that's the end of it. Get rid of the dead weight, and now it's going to go we'll be right back. Um, all of the into the other thing. Now, I don't know if you're noticing on the microphone here, but yeah, the audio is not entirely level here. So what do I do with the audio? So we're going to select our clip, and I can actually select both clips if need be, but we're just going to concentrate on the one clip for now. And we go over here uh, on our right is our little inspector, uh, right by the, there's a share button if you're familiar with Apple products. And now we're going to go over to audio. And a couple things we do. First of all, uh, I just put all my shows out in mono these days uh, just because they're talk shows. We're not really using stereo. And it really kind of cuts your audio it, file size in half. Not that we need it all the time, but it saves in the long run. And I'm just trying to get in a little more practice of that. So I'm going to go down here to the channel configuration. Everything records in stereo by default. And I'm just going to go to dual mono. So that will just separate everything. And sometimes it brings the audio level up a bit because it's taking two, two levels and, and spreading them across both speakers. And it, and it seems to add a little bit to it uh, sometimes. But that's that's not the effect, just to, just to make sure there's no surprises in there. And then I'll go to audio analysis under audio now, uh, enhancements. And we don't have the technology, not the technology, but well, yeah, we don't have the technology. Uh, we don't have the money necessarily to uh, get a preamp or, or anything like that, some higher end equipment. I know there's probably some things in here if I had an audio engineer would be like, yeah, you should do things this way. It would help things. But we get a little bit of a buzz, not a buzz, but a hiss uh, through our board. Uh, and we have like an XLR soundboard uh, plugged into the computer via USB. And let's say we get a little bit of noise. If anybody out there knows how I can get rid of it, please tell me. But there's always going to be a little bit of something, or we'll have something weird because we bring a lot of people in over Google Hangout. So it'll be a little bit kind of weird background noise here and there. Uh, so generally what I'll go in is is really just do a kind of a, a mass noise reduction. And you see we also have a little bit of a hazard uh, a warning label over here by our background uh, noise removal here. And uh, so typically, I'm pretty good. 50%, the amount of noise reduction, 50% will mostly take care of things when, when it comes to our shows. Now, you can move this depending on what's going on. If you just have a tiny bit of hiss, I would recommend actually pulling this down to 25% or lower. Maybe that's all you need. Uh, because, and I know audiophiles are going to notice this. You probably hear a little bit of chunkiness uh, if you're really listening to, to some of our audio. Because it's kind of, jeez, uh, I mean, without getting a lot of technical terms here uh, that I don't even understand because uh, I'm not an audio engineer. Uh, it, it, the higher you go, the more of your sound you're going to take out and the more muddy and digital, digital it's going to sound. Somebody out there will get that part. But um, but no, you, I, <laughs> unless you desperately, desperately need to get rid of a noise, I would say you almost never need to push it to, to 100%. Uh, 50% t tends to take care of everything. I don't hear a lot of complaints about it. It takes care of that, that background noise that we have, and we're good to go. So at that point, uh, ideally, I've looked at the front of the clips, the back of it. I've also replaced the secondary clip, let's say, and I've checked out to make sure it goes in and out. I've kind of played it back to make sure we are back. It's, the awesome it's the throws that I want. Uh, the only the only thing I have to watch out for, and sometimes maybe you listen to my shows and there's no outro music. Because uh, I mentioned the anchors before, because of the way this is configured, the anchor is actually on the front here on the file that we replace. And you'll see if I throw a file down here on here, it might throw that into a, an odd spot. You see, like, it's there. It needs to be realigned with its uh, outro. Uh, so I'll go ahead and do that. And I know this transition here, because this is where the music picks up, should match with this transition here that goes to the graphic. 
So I'll just match those up. Double check this. That's where I say, well, uh, well, of course, I, I threw the wrong uh, part of the clip in here. But let's just let's just imagine for a moment that he said uh, that we're going to go. Uh, we'll see you guys next week. Have an awesome week. Uh, <laughs> it will go there and then uh, play it back and make sure he says the right thing at the right place before tossing into the graphic and the music picks up and you're good to go. So I basically go through that process. It's a pretty quick. I check my fronts and my ends. The middle should be okay because uh, the audio should be consistent through. If anything major happened to the audio, I have a live audience to let me know that, some, that the audio is, is getting weird. Uh, I'm also monitoring the audio as we go before it gets to the computer. So there could be something happening on the computer that's making it go away. That's happened before. Again, the chat room will be yelling at me. And I also have a backup going to another computer. Uh, but generally, this saves me tons, tons, tons of time. And then I just render it out from there as a video. We throw that into a program called Compressor. And that will then uh, turn it into the MP3 that the majority of people actually uh, participate in the show on. So, uh, and I got Periscope here as well. So I hope you guys are enjoying that. Uh, but uh, th that's a real quick look at that. Again, if you're in audio, you'll probably get a lot more if you check out the video version of it. Uh, you know, it just, this, you know, the wraparound of how that timeline works is the big time saver for me. Uh, especially if you're doing something that's a regular templated show and you don't need to replace those end caps or the middle or something like that. Um, it, it's really going to save you time. Previously, and I don't know, I haven't touched Premiere for several years, but um, but I know it and uh, and uh, uh, Final Cut uh, 6, 7, 5 I worked on before. Uh, if you drop that in the middle, you're going to have to go replace and retime everything because it it just doesn't behave in the same way. And uh, it's just it's just killer for stuff like this for me. And really, audio tools, I'm not a real big, I don't use a Reaper audition, anything like that anymore. I used to. I used to have to output the audio into a, separately into another program, work on the audio, and do all the things I did in two clicks here in Final Cut Pro, bring it back and make sure it realigns with our lips and the video version, and then render it out. Um, I did one or two shows before I had Final Cut Pro here, and it took me... I was I was routinely up until four or five in the morning. I now do four shows regularly, and uh, and I'm up until now. Thankfully, with with people helping me out with some of the show notes, easily by two in the morning, and I'm doing more shows in less time, and kind of live to tape, and we're good to go. So I hope that gives you an idea of how this program can help you. Again, a little bit more pricey, Final Cut Pro X, and it's in the Mac App Store. And it's about 300 bucks. So um, let me know what you think about that. What tools are you using uh, in this vein to do video audio podcasting? And, uh, and, and it's a big, if you're going to do video podcasting, there's a big overhead. Computers, render time, um, and just time in general and file size and dealing with a lot, lot more stuff than just doing audio podcasting. So I caution anybody against doing like an hour, hour and a half podcast like we tend to. But again, these podcasts were um, evolved from audio podcasts originally. If I was going to start a new podcast, I advise and will not do one in video unless it's a five, 10 minute thing. Like this show, Basics Organomics. So I hope you enjoyed that. Please share it around. If there's anything that you hear me talking about or you have a question about, you want to see me do a how-to on the show, let me know at Sorgatron on the Twitter uh, or hit up the contact over at Sorgatron.com. Sign up for the newsletter, and we'll see you guys next time. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at SorgatronMedia.com.